So hello everyone. Uh, so actually I have edited the old file from the author and uh, he was just at the rename and rename with functions. So what I did, I, I will start with the rename and rename with and then go forward. So in here, the rename is actually used to rename some columns. So for example, uh, he was using the GT packet pizza place uh, data frame. So what we use for deploy rename is we can rename the any column like from name to pizza name. So at the start, we have these names, these ones. And then when I use the rename, the this name column will become these are name something. So that's how it is used. Uh, actually, if we look at the documentation of rename, it's it's a bit a bit different than the rename with because in the rename with we have the functions and the calls argument as well. But in the rename we have only the ellipses. So that's why in the rename actually in rename with actually you can put the calls like here is uh, we use the tidy select package to select those columns which start with t and then we apply the function of upper so it will actually pick these these column time and type and it will apply this function to upper to this uh, th these columns and then this is why this becomes the upper case so it, this is a bit different from the rename in this case. Similarly, we can put the pattern as well, like the regular expressions. So what understood for from here is we are actually trying to select those columns which have the I and the E. So for example, we have this column which has I and E and then this I and E here. So it will pick the column names on the basis of this pattern and it will replace that with hello so it's using the again the rename with uh, function from the deploy so that's how we can rename and reuse both of them i have uh, a question about the basic rename yes um so is it good practice or does it not matter at all like i frequently put the um like the the old the old one of the names in quotes i know i don't know does it so it's like clearly a string as opposed to potentially referring to a variable somewhere or something is that in my head yeah. is there one way or another way that's better practice it seems to not matter yeah okay let let, let us try that you you mean like this yeah uh, i mean i use double quotes but okay yeah it it, it doesn't matter i guess because we can try that it will still rename it because in the in the for example in the select statement we will see that because uh, like here I have used the mm, with okay. string and without string both in the same statement it doesn't matter it will okay. work in both cases okay and then we have the select after that in the uh, documentation uh, select is actually used to select the columns you already know. Um, Yes, this one. So we have like many options here, like we can select the range of columns. We want to delete or select all the columns, except something, some of the columns. We can use the and or or thing, and we can put the vector, uh, put the uh, vector of columns as well. And then these are some last column group calls and starts and end with. So what I did, I will, uh, apply these operations one by one and then we can go forward okay so if you can select columns based on the string and without the string if the, if there is no space between the column names so in here i have selected this in the empty cars data set miles per gallon and cylinder so it doesn't matter if you put it in string or without string uh Okay, so there was an option to select columns on the basis of vector. So 
you can put it like that or put it like that both of them will work so for example yeah okay this one is actually different data set maybe i have loaded it somewhere else this one is actually um the billboard data set yeah this one okay let me cut this out it should be here yes this one is actually a billboard data set uh, from the tidr package it contains the let me show it to you before it contains the artists and the date entered the, like the songs kind of data set so and the weeks for which which weeks what what is the rating of the songs so i am taking it here the track and the date entered these two columns i am selecting on the basis of a vector okay let's go back to the empty cars this one was an odd one out we can select the with on the basis of a range as well so from the miles per gallon in the names empty cars we have columns from the miles per gallon to something like carburetors so i can select on the basis of a range from miles per gallon to the horsepower so all these four columns will be selected like that and if you want to delete some column or uh, uh, to uh, select all of the column except that one column you can use the minus sign before it or you can use the semicolon as well uh, we will look into after that like here i have selected all the columns except the cylinder column it it should come after the miles per gallon but it is not here okay and then uh for uh this this one becomes handy when the, there is spaces between the uh column names so for example i have added uh, one column miles per gallon instead of uh, just renaming it and putting the space in in the column names adding one column and then i select the column on the base on the on the, that specific column i have selected that which has the space and that i am deleted deleting that column so that's how now the empty card should come back to its original form but if i have added this one there should be the miles per gallon column and here i am deleted deleting that column so there if there is a space you can use this uh, in this way okay and then you can select the columns on the basis of index as well like here i am selecting column 1 and column 2 on the basis of their index which are actually miles per gallon and cylinder and then actually you can rename some columns which is actually done it here before or maybe in the code below so if i want to rename the horsepower to gross horsepower i can rename it in in, in the basis of like that and then similarly we can delete that as well yeah i didn't add it that's why it's giving us error okay and then there is an everything option like for example i want to select these two columns and then rest of the everything like all, all of the rest of the columns so it will also rearrange the columns like the so cylinder and displacer would come before and then the rest of the columns cylinder and displacement comes in and then rest of the columns so we use the everything command here that's a really cool use i'd never seen that before yeah the, uh, there are some option other as well like in the everything you can put maybe if we can look at the documentation for everything if we have some other options as well so uh I guess we should move to the select. It should be better. Uh, everything. Okay. So you can put the vector, a vector, character vector as well. So for example, in everything, if I put uh, a vector of miles per gallon only, then it should give me three columns only. So, and you can put, I mean, the, we are selecting displacement and those things. Okay, then put one other, and then we can select the 
Um, should work, why it is not working? There is some other column, for example, if you second. Okay, maybe I'm making some error. Anyway, this accepts the, I guess, the vector as well. Uh, okay, there is another option to select the last column as well. Like, for example, we have the last column of carburetors, this one. So we can select some columns in between and then the last column. It will also rearrange some VS and then gear and then the carburetor last column comes in and then you can put the an offset in the last argument as well like in here it is deleting the last five columns but selecting all of the rest of the column like from column number one to the all the columns except last five so in here uh, it will give all these columns which are actually not the last five these are the first from the start so in here, for example, in the named empty card, we have this. We have from the miles per gallon to the weight, and we are deleting these five last columns. So this that's how we can put an offset in it. And then there's a group calls option, but, but for that, you should have a group, uh, group by command, because it's it's it acts on the group of, uh, groups in the data frame. So it will give the uh, output in the form of uh, the, the columns which are grouped only. Like for example, uh, we were here, yes. So I have grouped on the basis of horsepower and weight. This comes in here because these are the group columns. There are two groups, HP and weight but I have an added, added one other column as well. So for example, if I delete this, I will get only the group columns, the horsepower and the weight. Okay, and then you can like the minus, you can choose the semicolon or uh, to get or rest of all the columns except the horsepower. So it's uh, basically the same, just like the filter command, we use this mostly in the filter command. And then you can put the vector of the columns as well in here. Okay, and then Easter eggs, I guess we have already read that last time. And then comes the, the other command like starts with, then ends with, then contains. So this accepts the, normally the strings. So let's check if what kind of options we have in here, in the starts with and ends with and those things. So if I go to the starts with, it does the match, a character vector. So it will accept a, a string or a character vector, and it will check any column which starts with the string which, which we are putting in. So whose name starts with. So for, for example, I am putting it here, A, and in the names we have one column, I guess, with the A, yes, this one. So it will give us, that one column only, the AM. And then ends with it all, it's the reverse of that. So if we want to get the gear column, we can put the R here, but here I put the B and P. It will select all the columns which are ending with either B or P. So, the carburetors, displacement, and the horsepower. Okay, and then I'm using the OR command here. Like it is used, it is giving me the, it is running actually the command of ends with a or the MPG. So it will give both of the columns, the MPG and any other column which end with K or any columns which end with K. But if there is no column which end with K, that's why it will give, it, it can give me the MPG. MPG. Okay. And then comes the contains. Uh, so normally sometimes we have columns which are very long names and you can, uh, you get confused. Like how can I use the starts with that end with this contains become handy. You, you, you can put some kind of, uh, regular expressions in here as well. 
So if I put the P here, it will give me all the columns which it contain at least P in its name. And then I put the weight as well. So it comes in as well in the output. Okay, and then uh, sometimes we have a pattern of column names, like in the other data frame, which we are just seeing this one. We have a pattern like from week one to week 76. So this non range functions become handy in this case. So I am putting the pattern of WK and I am asking it to get only the columns which are in this range from 10 to 15. So this will give me these columns only. So num range is actually useful in that case. And the matches is actually the one which accepts the regular expressions. Uh, it, 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 it says it's in the in its uh, documentation as well, if I remember. So in the matches, yeah, this one. Match. Okay. Yeah. Matches, this is a regular expression. So for the matches only, it only accepts the regular expression. Uh, that's why I put it the only the TR, like I'm trying to get the track column. It will give me the track column, or otherwise I can put the WK or some kind of regular expression. It will give me all the WK columns which have this kind of pattern. And then we have the all of. Uh, all of is actually uh, accepts the, a variable, uh, a, a vector. Uh, and then it will check if all of these uh, strings of the vector or values of the vector are in the names of the columns. So if I put this one and I will put the this vector in here, it will give me only those columns which are in this vector, week 14 and the track. But this is different than the any of. Any of actually does not care if your vector has a value which is not in the column names. So in here, I have put a, 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 a name which is not in the names of the data frame of the billboard data frame. Uh, we have the artist track and date entered and then the weeks, but we do not have the artist found. So this will give the output. Uh, let me change the vector and then it will give the output. But if I put it here, this will give me an error. Artist found. So, and then I will run it. It will give me an error. So this is a different than all of and any of and that are different in this case. Okay, and then comes the where command. Uh, it actually accepts the function, a function which uh, uh, I'm not sure if it is actually under the select. It should be, or maybe I have read it somewhere. Yes, it is. Okay, so it actually accepts a function. So we can write a custom function as well to select a column. So I have, that's why I'm putting only the numeric is numeric as a function and it will give all of the columns which are numeric, which are numeric data. Uh, I have tried to write some function, custom function, but maybe my function is not good enough or something. It will give me error. In object artist is not found. I will check where I am making some error because I am putting the commands and the arguments by writing some custom function and then putting it in under the where. So it's, it's it can be useful for uh, for writing the custom function and you can select some columns. Okay, okay, and then comes the groups. Uh, we have like count and tally and add count and add tally these kind of verbs. Uh, counts actually lets to quickly count the unique values. So it's it's just like the frequency command which we use in the statistics, uh, like how many times each value comes in in the column. So and you you it has the arguments. Uh, I mean options to put the 
name of the column, which is the output from the count function. So for example, in here, I am using the empty car data set again, miles for the miles per gallon column, I'm sorting it from ascending to descending from high to low, and then renaming the uh, output as frequencies. So it will give me the like 10.4 come two times. So it will give me the count of the value. Uh, it, it, it is uh, useful when you are actually using it for one column. But if you are trying to do it for two columns, it's actually useless because it, uh, because uh, the two columns, the output is only in the form of a one n uh, n column which which uh, gives the frequencies. So I am here, for example, adding a column mpj, just renaming it, and then applying the count function on both of the columns on two columns now. So now both of these values are actually the same the, the, i have done it on purpose that's why because if i put it here for example if i put it on hp here it doesn't care about the hp column now it will give me the frequencies of both or maybe the result is a bit confusing i don't know uh, Actually, what I found in the use use case is for the one column, it works perfectly, but I don't know how this output changes for the two columns or whatever is trying to show. Uh, we can look at, it, at its documentation for something if we can explore. So counts actually let you unique values of one or more variables. So this one is actually a data frame, extension, a table. Then we have the weight options and the sorting and the naming, which I've actually used. Okay, then for example, if I put it instead of the MPG, empty cars, oh, sorry. Yeah. 32. So this will actually the uh, give the I guess the number of columns or number of rows. Not sure. 32. Yes. So just like a uh, frequency in the values, uh, uh, frequency of the values in the data frame, it works like that. Okay. Uh, and the tally is actually the lower level function that assumes you are done the grouping. So for example, it will give me the sum of the, uh, all the values in the MPG data frame, uh, in the MPG column, the 642.9, which is actually the sum of the values. And if we add the count in here, we can actually get the sum of the frequencies in that. So that, that's how we can use the tally uh, command in here and then we have the add count and add tally which are actually equivalents to add tally but we have the mutate instead of summarize which means that all the columns will show up with the frequencies but the frequencies output will be only for the column you are trying to get result for so for example for the mpg column it will give all the columns but the frequencies here or the I'm I have renamed it frequencies, but if I delete it, it will become n. Yes. So it will uh, the difference is like for example, in here it, it was giving us that 10.4 comes two times, but in here the 10.4 does not show up. So this is a bit different. The results are matching the results are matching with that like two 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 something results are matching but the values are actually original now so it's get a bit confusing in this case if we use the add count in here and then add tally uh it is showing all the columns with the mutate command unlike count and tally yes so for example 
it will give the sum just like the tally but the, all the columns will show up like that so this is actually the sum of which mpg yes this column okay and then you can put two columns as well in here uh so this will actually the sum of the values in both of these columns and these are actually equal to some of these two columns so if we if uh, we can use the count and the tally for checking the frequencies of the values in the column like which value comes how many times in this case in this case it becomes useful okay and then after that in the documentation we go to the group by like for grouping the variables uh, we can use the group vars to use the group grouping variables uh, to see the grouping variable like what are the grouping variables so i am here grouping by cylinder and then i'm seeing the that the grouping variable is cylinder so in this way you can see the uh, grouping variable and then you can of course do some operations on it like for i am here filtering the in the each of the group for the cylinder in the cylinder we actually have three type of groups uh, uh, we have actually three type of groups six cylinders four cylinders and eight cylinders so it will make three groups and in each group it will calculate the maximum displacement so that's how we get the maximum displacement here so you can do do some operations in each of the group um, and then for example uh, you have grouped some on the basis of some variables you have grouped some columns uh, groups your data and then you do some operations but after that you want to group again so in this case the so if you want to group again the old grouping variables become ungroup ungrouped so but we do not want to remove the old grouping variables so in that case this add command comes very handy like it will add to the old grouping variables so for example in here i am grouping by cylinder then i am doing some operations but i am grouped by uh, using the group by again like i am adding one more column to the groups but with the dot add equal to true so now the grouping variable should be two the cylinder and the am and then i can see i will see that uh, how many grouping variables are in there so now we have two grouping variables in this way you can add to the previous grouping variables and of course you can use the ungroup to ungroup at any time so if you remove the grouping variables there is no grouping variable shown here only the table description is in here quick okay. quick question for the um this this add and drop are these are these new uh new arguments in, in group i i'm just curious i, I i'd never used them before uh, so it's really interesting to see I, I thought group was just just with the ellipses but yeah i'm not sure actually there is nothing written here like yeah i think it is old one to add to the existing groups choose add is equal to true or maybe this argument was previously called add but that prevented creating a new grouping variable called add okay so if you want to add some variable with the name add they have renamed it to dot add uh, uh, normally it is uh, if there is something newly added they sh they they have a label like experimental but in here there is no such thing maybe it is on old one and we were not aware of it yeah no uh, this is really cool i'm i'm yeah again reward rewarding to actually read the documentation <laughs> yeah use add is equal to true to instead of append okay um okay and then you can ungroup an entire and there are some uh some very useful functions like group map and something we will look into that as well group map is actually returns a list of the results from calling a dot f it's actually results uh accepts a function as an input so
uh, it accepts a function as an argument. Uh, like here, for example, they are showing it an experimental basis. So you can write a custom function here as well. But in my case, I am actually using a dot head as a function. And then I'm uh, out showing the output on only the two rows on each group. So if I run this, it, it will give me a list, list of tables. So it will show only the two rows which are grouped on the basis of cylinder. So this one is actually for cylinder equal to four and then six and then eight. So uh, maybe this one is in something extra. If I delete this, yeah, I will get a whole of the head, the top six rows. So on the basis of each group, we have table in the form of a list. Uh, okay, and then uh, uh, the same command I've used it for applying from the documentation actually for the applying the regression model on each group. So you can apply for in the iris data set, for example, it's easy to understand because we have species in the string data. Um, and then I apply the regression model uh, where the sample length is a dependent variable. And we have uh, output of the regression model in separate tables for each of the group data. Okay, and then group.modify, this actually gives the output in the form of a table instead of a list. So a bit different than that. And here I'm showing the, again, the two rows. So for the cylinder equal to four, we have one table for all of the things and applying the model, regression model, just like before but in the output will be in the form of a table. So we have an estimates and standard deviation and intercepts, everything in the table, in the form of a table. Uh, group, walk, uh, group walk is actually, I could not understand. I mean, maybe it's... Uh, like what this does. Ah, uh, okay. I think I see what it might so it's I guess it's like per walk where you're in, you're in, you're not actually you're like creating a side effect. Uh, so yeah. Like, um, instead of actually modifying the data set. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It says the same because uh, group per style functions that can be used to trade. Uh, sorry, in the group walk is actually different because it says something like that. Or dot f for the side effects and return the input table. Okay, it's uh, maybe I'm missing that part. I will look into it. Okay, and then the group nesting, it's actually nesting the output on the basis of a grouping variable. Like we have a list, but the output is shown in like that. So this is actually the same, like this ones, these ones, uh, these ones, but the the outputs is nested in the form of the tables. So in that case, it's a, a bit different. Uh, okay, and then group split to group and split and ungroup data frame. So for, for example, in the IRS data set on the basis of species, uh, I have saved the groups in IR variable and then I am group splitting it. So, on the uh, in here, I have all the, I mean, outputs on the basis of these things, uh, these uh, grouping variables. But if we use the, actually, this is giving the output in the form of a table. But if we actually see the previous output, which is in the form of a list, if we compare the results. It should be the same because one is giving the output in the list and one is giving in the table. So in that case, I have put an example here, like for example, and here I'm using the group nest, but in the, uh, you know, and then I am comparing it with the group split. Yes. Uh, so this output, this one output is equal to this output actually. One is using group nest and then one is using the group, but this one is giving the output in the form of a list. 
So the 2.5 and 1.9, the 2.5 and 1.9. So it's up to you if you want to output in the list or a table. Okay, and then so Shaw, one one quick question on, on the on this uh, thing. Uh, I'm curious, where did you find the group nest and group split? I didn't see it in the reference index, but maybe it's uh, uh, it's elsewhere. It was given uh, under like like here. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank see you. Also something. Yeah. Okay, and then comes that by and dot, dot by. Actually, we have already discussed it in previous cohorts. Uh, so just for an example, I am using it uh, here, like grouping by species before and then getting the output from the summarize will give me this output. But in here, I'm not grouping it before, but I am rather using it dot by equal to series. The output is the same. Uh, but uh, this one is actually giving in the form of table, but this one is not. So maybe there is some extra options in here. Or maybe so, there's maybe you've just found a bug actually. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then of, of course you can group by with on the basis of two columns as well. So, and with the dot by as well, you can put a vector of two columns. It's the same output is the same. There are some hidden rows in here. The same case is like here we have a table, but here we do not have a table or maybe I'm missing some things. If, uh, or we can search that dot by documentation, is it now? Yeah, so either they don't have like a print method for whatever that returns or, or yeah, or if it's just not returning a tibble. I guess you could, yeah. like, we could, we could like store it and then come like look at the attributes of both of those. But uh, that's really, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe there is some extra option which we have to do like comma and something, and then it will give us an output in the form of a tibble. So that's why I was trying to search on, but. Okay, but it should not be because this actually comes in, has come in as an alternative for the group by, but it is not showing in the form of a table. Okay, and then comes the row wise, which is used to uh, or apply some operations row wise, like by row by row. So in here, I am using the row wise and then I'm mutating M column, which is a minimum value of these columns from cylinder to horsepower so it will give some operation then it will give me the minimum value in these columns from cylinder to horsepower in these three columns so it will give uh, apply the operation row by row but i'm surprised actually if i do that in the mutate the output is not the same so how it should be different i'm a bit confused in that, but uh, maybe the mutate does not apply the operations row wise or something. Um, oh yeah, so you, you have to, yeah, I guess you have to to group it first. Uh, so like that row wise is like basically creating a row wise group, and then the operation happens in the row rather than in the column. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe. Was data? Because I think I think most uh, most R functions are what do they call it? Uh, like vector vectorized, uh, so they yeah, work. Yeah. Um, but I guess there are some like base R's like row row sums and things like that that are actually row wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says in here it's implicitly grouped by row. Okay. Okay, and then. Uh, comes the summarize. It's actually creates a new data frame, a new table in that case. Uh, and then it summarizes the on the basis of the groups. So if we do not use the groups, it's actually uh, uh, does not show the output like a table. So in here I am grouping by the species and then 
getting an output in the form of a table which gives the minimum value of the petal length in each of the species. But in here, for example, if I do not group by, it gives me the output in only one row. This is a, a mention in the documentation. If there is no grouping variable, the output will be a single row. So this, this is actually the minimum value of petal length, but not on the basis of the groups. And of course, you have both of the options. Like for example, if you uh, check the documentation for the summarize both of uh, with the Z and with the um, IR, both are acceptable. Okay, and then uh, comes the dot groups command. Uh, which is actually because there are many options. So I should like to read its documentation. Summarize, yes. Okay, so under the summarize, we have the dot groups, actually, which is a bit new. And they have like dropping the last level of the grouping. Uh, so, so if we have the grouping variables before the summarize, what it does this, it drops the last level of the grouping. This was, so this was before the version 1.0 and Each row is its own group. So in that case, if I'm using dot drop, sorry. Yeah, this one. All levels of grouping are dropped. So in that case, there are no grouping variables shown here. Like for example, if I want to show the grouping variables, there should not be a grouping variable. So there are some options in here, dot groups under the summarize, and you can use that. Uh, <laughs> we have actually ended before the time. I thought it's long enough for one hour. Okay, if, if any of you have any questions. Just actually kind of a, co a comment, like I, I, um, uh, I, won I wonder if um, our studio are going to think about, or sorry, pause it, um, uh, is going to think about uh, introducing like a, like a dot row argument. So they've got the dot by, which would be the group by, mm -hmm. and they also allow you to to group by rows, like with the row wise operator. But there's no kind of like, if I can put it this way, ephemeral row grouping within you know, summarize or mutate and these these things. I feel like that might actually be useful, but I, I don't know how often are you our users are actually doing that. I mean, for my for my own part, since I'm coming a bit from Stata, where there, there, there's lots of like row-wise operations, I, for me personally, it'd be useful, I, perhaps. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how the how much the broader community actually has has used row-wise grouping. Anyway, just 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 a comment. I thought that was kind of interesting. Can you talk a little bit more about what your use case would be? I'm just curious. I don't think I fully understand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I think it probably it's for for, for me. It's um, uh, I guess it kind of make more sense if you're familiar with some of Stata's function. Stata, um, you you can do like uh, they they have, so basically they have a, a function called generate, which is kind of like mutate in 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 R. Um, and, and then there's one that's called egen, so it's like an extended set of functions that that mostly operate, not all, but Many of them operate kind of 
row, row wise and perform some interesting operations. So it could be, for example, like the minimum within a set of variables. So you know, operations that look across columns. Um, and, and some of those are kind of interesting for some use cases that I, I, I can't readily come up with a use case, but let's just say that, like that's useful to be able to operate within rows, right? Yeah, yeah, that um, makes sense. That and, makes sense. and so I, I was just kind of wondering out loud if 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 Posit has any plans of 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 um, you know having a dot row um, or whatever the name would be, but ba basically where you could say, okay, let me perform this mutate operation within the row or the summarize operation within rows, and then you know come back to uh, an un an ungrouped data frame. And so you think that that's that row wise doesn't do that sufficiently? Well, so like, I mean, I, I, it works right now. It's just, let, let's put it this way. So, so um, you, you can, you can, you can group and ungroup in the same way you could with, you know, previously, I guess, kind of the group by perform some set of operations ungroup, right? And so you can do the same with row wise. So you do row wise, so it groups by rows instead of by columns, yep. um, perform, perform some operations, and then you have the same ungroup. Um, and but the ungroup is like with respect to the rows, which is the, the grouping structure, I guess. Um, so so in other words, like row wise users still have to to use that construct, uh, whereas the group group by users have this new feature. Does that yeah. make a little more sense? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Thanks. And if if for example in the group by we have the row wise like we can say like for our groups under the species in the iris data set we want to do some operations on some of the rows on each group not like all <laughs> of the groups so <laughs> have you have you tried that cha i wonder if uh, i wonder no. if that works no okay no i never tried it but i'm curious to try now comes, <laughs> idea comes in my mind okay i guess uh, let's end the meeting and a bit short, but I should have added some more things. I maybe let's see if we add something next time. Yeah, really nice presentation. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.